Hey boys and girls, today's a big day. This is the new Ford Connector. This is the thing that I've been waiting for um, ever since I met uh, Mr. Farley. <laughs> I've been saying, hey, let's get one of these things for Ford. This is double the value of that. Now, this is what we use at work right now, but this is only for level two. This gives me supercharging. So let's show you how this happens. First, first we're gonna hook right into the uh, the Tesla charging port, and you'll see that there's a, oh, let me turn it around. You'll see there's a little locking device similar to what we've got over there that holds this thing in place. Now, whoop, so I don't trip over everything. Now we go over here, pull down that little flap, plug it in, and son of a gun, we have a winner. This is, <laughs> I mean, it sounds like it's simple and easy and whatnot, but I'm telling you what, this, this little box right here is the big game changer for everything at Ford Motor Company. And I really have to thank the guys. I, I have to thank Jim Farley and uh, Doug Field for making this happen. And of course, Elon Musk and, uh, and the Tesla crew for allowing this to happen. This will really increase the, uh, the value of every Ford vehicle out there so okay robert i don't claim to be an expert on uh, apps and stuff like that we've downloaded the ford app why don't you tell me what i'm going to need to do to make this magic box work um, in the future sure so from the ford pass app you're able to view public chargers that are near your your location or search for them elsewhere we're at a Tesla supercharger right now that is open to Ford EVs. So what you'll see in the app here is you'll see a couple a couple things. First of all, it's in network. It's in the Blueville Charge Network, meaning you can use Ford Pass to pay. Yeah. It is plug and charge capable. So all you would need to do at this location is attach your adapter, plug in, and we'll handle your payment from there. Yeah. But really importantly, we want we want people to know they got to look for this symbol that says adapter needed. So if you don't have your adapter yet, you yeah. do need the adapter to charge at this location that we're at right now. Okay. So. This adapter is a prototype that we're looking at. Yep. When do you think the new adapters might be coming out, uh, like the ones that are going to be for sale or for those people who already have something like the Lightning here? Sure. So we, do you think? we uh, customer orders started on the 29th of February. We expect orders to start shipping by the end of March to some of those early, early orders. And we know that uh, demand is going to outstrip our supply at the beginning. Yeah. So when customers place their order, they'll get an expected delivery date and to, uh, in their confirmation email, it'll tell them about when they should expect their adapter. Ah, okay. All right. Good then. So this is a big deal uh, for me anyway. Uh, how big a deal is it for Ford? I mean, the, the apps that have to be created, uh, all the electronic stuff and whatnot. Um, I believe that you guys are all um, OTA over the air kind of uh, downloads and whatnot. Yep. How much time would it take for someone who they've got their adapter now, They maybe they've got their Ford um, uh, app all ready to go. Um, how, long, how long does it take then to, to make everything happen? Sure. So, um, yeah, our vehicles are over the air capable. Um, what's, what's good is that out of the box, there is no update to the vehicle that's required for compatibility at Tesla superchargers, mm. but we want customers to get the over the air update for Mustang Mach-E and F-150 Lightning that enables plug and charge at Tesla superchargers. That update started going out on February 29th. We're, um, a, large number of customer vehicles have already received it. The good news for customers is they're, um, the vast majority of vehicles that are eligible for the over-the-air update are gonna receive that update before they get their adapter. Very good, very good indeed. So um, we've, we've talked about pretty much everything that, that, uh, that Ford's been doing as far as the charger and stuff like that. The interfaces, I mean, um, the, let me rephrase that, the financial interfaces. So. Um, I, I charge up, I do what I do. How does the money extract from, is it coming out of Apple Pay or is it something that you guys have through uh, the dealerships? How, what's, what's going on with that? Sure, so when you use Ford Pass, uh, Charge Assist or Plug and Charge at a Tesla Supercharger or any of our in-network Blueville Charge Network locations, we're using a common payment method that, that you saved with your Ford Pass profile. So when you oh, set up okay. your account, we asked for a credit card to sign up for Blueville Charge Network. 
there's over 126,000 chargers um, across the United States and Canada where you can use that common payment method to pay. So when you plug in for plug and charge, we're gonna there's some there's some contract certificates on the vehicle. The vehicle gets plugged in. We exchange those certificates with Tesla. It's it's not exchanging your credit card number or your VIN. It's exchanging a you know cryptographic certificates as part of the standard. Mm -hmm. And when you unplug, you'll get the bill from Ford to your credit card. Okay, that sounds uh, easy peasy. Um, there was one other thing that I wanted to uh, discuss. Oh, the availability now. Not all Tesla chargers work. Yeah. So um, uh, you, I think, I'm not sure who mentioned it, but somebody said something about 60%. 60% of the Tesla chargers are, are gonna be uh, suitable for fast charging. Yep. Um, uh, are they gonna come up on my screen then? Or uh, how, how, how is this all gonna work? Yep, so uh, that's one of the reasons that we're, we're trying to drive that message of look at Charge Assist, look at Ford Pass, the app will, the app will tell you. Yeah. Um, the you're correct uh version 2 superchargers so some older tesla superchargers remain unavailable to to non-tesla evs mm -hmm. but the vast majority of version 3 superchargers are available to non-tesla evs starting la or to ford evs starting last week um that is that's something that we want customers to know that you know they they can't rely on just you know seeing a charger or remembering where one exists we really want them to use the tools that say is this one one you can use right okay so uh, to avoid disappointment yep. make sure you use the app properly yep. yeah well i can't think of anything else that uh, that um that's you know on my mind but have you got anything else that you need to or maybe could mention to the audience so we're really excited to roll this out. We're, we're super excited to see customers out there. The only other thing I would note is just, just I, you know, I'm gonna do my little PSA on adapter safety. We know a lot of customers have third-party AC adapters for level two charging. We just wanna make it really clear that those adapters cannot be used with fast chargers. Yeah. We need the customers to use their fast charging adapters with a fast charger. And if they wanna use an AC adapter, they need to use that AC adapter only with AC chargers. Yeah. Don't mix and match adapters. Yeah. So it's gonna be this not that exactly okay good so um well anyway um say ending on a safe note is always a good idea so everybody that's been watching thank you so much for watching and um thank you robert for giving us um, for all the details us. that we need and um and thanks to the heavens for not <laughs> raining us out until we could get inside uh inside yep. the truck yeah thank, thank you so much thank thanks you for watching much. yep thank you bye now